Hello folks, so today I want to talk to you about the church in Philadelphia. So the church in Philadelphia, that's actually the United States church, that's the churches of the United States, that is the people who believe in Jesus Christ in the United States. Um, and the way that I know this is because there are several um, bits of information in this passage that line up with the United States. First, the name, the Church of Philadelphia. The, the capital of the, uh, the United States originally was Philadelphia. Yeah, so like I was saying, the Church of Philadelphia, the, the um, capital of the United States originally, during the Constitutional Convention, uh, the war for the Revolutionary War in the 1700s, was Philadelphia. And of course, there were you know, a lot of Christians in the United States initially. Um, and there still are. And in fact, that's another interesting point, is the United States sends out more people to go make disciples in all the nations than any other nation on, on the planet, singularly. I mean, over a quarter of the missionaries that go out into the world come from the United States. Um, and, you know, it says in this passage, in Revelation chapter 3, um, that even though uh, you have little strength, you have kept my word and have not denied my name. Well, how do you not deny Jesus' name if you're, if you're sending out more than a quarter of the uh, missionaries, evangelists, etc., teachers uh, into the world, then yeah, you're not denying Jesus' name, right? Now, obviously there are a lot of different denominations and they're all, they all think they're right. <laughs> You know, like 10,000 different denominations, everybody has their own flavor of Christianity, everybody thinks they know what they're talking about. Um, but in, amongst those denominations are, and even, you know, people that don't go to church, that still believe in Jesus, and, uh, you know, have a relationship with Him, and listen to the Holy Spirit, and do the will of the Father, that type of thing. Those most important things. Um... The other aspect of this that really illustrates that the United States is the, the Church of Philadelphia, um, or that rather the American Church in the United States is the Church of Philadelphia. It's, it's uh, and yeah, you know, the, you, the government is composed of people. Some, many, many of the people in the government believe in Jesus Christ. So, in that sense, you could say that. But. Um, there are a lot of people who are in the government that they believe in Jesus Christ, but they don't like worship him. You know what I mean? They're uh, not necessarily for Jesus at all um, in that sense. And then there's some people who don't believe in him. Uh, uh, you know, and that. Uh, and then there's you know other people of other faiths. Um, one of the other faiths in the United States, of course, is the Jewish faith. And that is specifically mentioned in this passage, that God would make those who are of the synagogue, and it says specifically of Satan, um, who claim to be Jews, though they are not. So what does that mean? You know, of the various denominations of Judaism, and the various different ways of, you know, you know, from being like a Karaite Jew, trying to practice the Old Testament, to, you know, whatever or to the Talmud, you know, people and the Kabbalah and all that stuff. Um, you know, there's this huge variation uh, among people who call themselves Jews. And so where in there uh, is, you know, this, <laughs> does the, does, you know, how many people call themselves Jews that are atheists, you know, for example. In Israel, even though a lot of people call themselves Jews, about, about six million people in Israel, uh, quite a few of them are actually atheists. Um, only about half the population actually practices any form of religious Judaism in Israel, something like that. And then in the United States, you've got another 6 million Jewish people. So again, this is the fulfillment of this passage specifically. And in the rest of the world, there's a few hundred thousand spread out amongst the 200 nations other Jewish pe people practicing Judaism in the various nations throughout the world. So there's a, 
you know, a smaller community elsewhere, but in the United States and Israel, the two largest uh, communities of Jewish speaker, uh, people. Um, so, you have a little fulfillment, and the reason why, of course, the Jewish people and the, you know, why people come to the United States is because of the Christian church and the tolerance, uh, religious tolerance, um, that is found here and not so much in the rest of the world, um, as much. And, and one of the, another reason, of course, is God has, um, done a lot of things that have been, um, you could say that God loved uh, the church in America. You know, having uh, having your having a continent. Uh, actually, one of the things more than anything that, that is the the more you know the studying of the Bible that is prevalent in the United States. Um, like in in the Germanic areas, um, the various Germanic principalities. Um, they they have also have a, a strong tradition of studying the Bible, but like in a lot of the Christian denominations, um, people aren't really necessarily encouraged to study the Bible themselves and to try and understand it. But in the, in the United States, definitely people are encouraged to study the Bible and try and understand it. It's been that way for uh, hundreds of years. In fact, in the early um, early formation in the 1700s, early 1800s, they would study the Bible, and that's how they learned how to read. You know, that, that's, that was their primer for reading. Um, so, yeah. So that's why I think that the Church of Philadelphia is actually the United States of America. So that means, or that implies rather, that the rest of these churches are, are other nations. Um, and so it might be possible to figure out what one or more of them are. So I think I'll take a look at these. I, I always kind of wondered what they were, and then it finally occurred to me this church in Philadelphia that is the United States because of these, what, three? Oh no, and then the fourth data point. Hang on for one second. Okay, and so that fourth data point, um, that also correlates with the United States being the church in Philadelphia is, in verse 10, it says, since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come upon the whole world to test those who live on the earth. So what is that hour of trial that comes on the whole world to test those who live on the earth? Well, I think it is the, the scamtastic national ID card system uh, that is being rolled out throughout the earth. Um, in just the last few years, many nations have rolled out national identity card programs. Um, and, you know, I think it's a scam because basically it's a false sense of security, right? A person's either trustworthy or they're not, right? Um, they're either lying to you or they're not. And the idea that having a little plastic card is going to make everything better is a fallacious idea, right? Because everybody knows identity cards get faked by people who are willing to lie all the time. Uh, it happens every day uh, around the world, and so it is totally a false sense of security, and the literal mark of the beast uh, system type thing is already going on. Nine out of ten, uh, the most populous nations, they have a population. Nine out of ten of the most populous nations on the earth have a population of about four billion people, and they have national identity card programs. Now, the two most populous nations, China and India, right next to each other, are the literal beast that rises up out of the earth with two horns. The two horned beast that rises up out of the earth is India and China. In India, they've uh, enrolled 1.1 billion people in a biometric ID card, so a national ID card, but they scan the irises in the, far, in the forehead, so it's, a, it's using their irises as a mark uh, for identification purposes. A mark in the ancient world was a form of identification. Um, and in China, they have literally forced a billion people to receive national identity cards, and on those cards they have uh, issued 18-digit uh, 
citizen identity number. So that's a number for a citizen. That is a name for a citizen for identification purposes. It's their singular form of identification, singular identi uh, identification number in China. Um, and it, you know the fact that it's 18 digits, if you count the number of the beast, 6 plus 6 plus 6, you get 18 digits. It's not a coincidence. Is the literal fulfillment of Revelation chapter 13 in India and China. It's an ongoing thing. Uh, India started in 2009 uh, with a voluntary program, and China started with a voluntary program in 1984. But now it's mandatory in China, and in India, it's it's now mandatory for opening a bank account. So in order to buy and sell. Right, materially, and in fact, they they took the banks, the central banks, the Antichrist, false prophet central banks in India have taken out of circulation all the notes that are above about fifteen dollars worth of value. So they only have like a fifteen dollar bill, a ten dollar bill, and a five dollar bill, and a one dollar bill. Uh, they don't have any higher notes. Right? They say it's to you know counteract counterfeiting, but the reality is, it is uh, a test bed for uh, moving society toward a, uh, a virtual currency. And can they continue with their corruption using cryptocurrencies? And that's really the question, right? Because the only reason, well, one of the few reasons why they don't go to away from a cash or away from cash is because they are also running all the criminal. Uh, operations as well through these banks and they can't uh, launder the money right so they need like a some kind of uh, a currency if they go virtually to get it off their books and launder it so criminal conduct at the highest levels in every nation basically throughout the earth is standard operating procedure it has been for millennia. I mean, what do you think a monarchy is? It's basically an organized crime family, and it has its lieutenants that become the lords and the ladies. And they might put on airs, you know, that they are not just criminals, but that's what they are. They're criminals willing to enforce their sovereign, so their, their boss, uh, their boss's will on the people. Um, so the United States tried to do something different, a representative uh, government, um, but that has been changing over time. Um, at one point, you know, initially in the 1790s, America had like a 10,000 voters to one representative ratio. Um, today, that ratio has slipped to about 500,000 to one representative. And that's because the United States did not have enough states still Still, not enough states have ratified the first proposed amendment to the U.S. Constitution, which would increase the number of representatives uh, to, instead of 435 to Congress, if, if enough states ratified the first amendment today, uh, it would increase the number of representatives to Congress from 400 to several thousand. Okay? And what that means is you could know, you're more likely to know your representative, you're more likely to be able to share your ideas with them, you're more likely to actually be represented and share your concerns on a national level and say you don't like the war you go talk to your representative you don't like the um the policy you go talk to your representative you are representative so potentially right you could go see that person and talk to them you could still do that but one in five hundred thousand people five hundred thousand people try and go see one person it's more like a you know it's like a very, very, very large rock concert. You're not going to be spending very much time with that person. You're not going to have your, um, you're not going to be represented basically at this, at this point with one in, one in uh, 500,000 people. Um, it's a 50 fold decline in representation in the United States. So that is, that is the singular biggest issue in politics and it accounts for a lot of the degradation that you see in society. You know, why, why isn't the United States feeding the world? Why isn't the United States housing the world? That's your reason, is because a smaller group of people is um, more readily manipulated by the uh, interests of a few than 
a larger group of people, which would be um, which would be more impacted or more um, influenced by the interests of the many, right? Because there would be a closer connection to the communities and also builds community. So, um, but the point I'm trying to make is nine out of ten nations have national identity cards at this point, and um, the two most populous nations, India and China, have national identity card programs, which literally fulfill uh, the beast of the two horns that rises out of the earth. Uh, Revelation chapter 13 is talking about economics in general and geo geopolitics, geopolitics. And so it's got the United States as the sea beast, and then it's got the um, uh, China and India as the earth beast. And in 2016, China um, set up a uh, currency as an image of the beast to be worshipped around the world. And, and it is. They, they have set it up as a world reserve currency with the IMF. So again, the Antichrist, false prophet, um, central bankers. Um, they have their own religion. They, they turn the currency... In, they turn the monetary system into a currency worshiping religion, basically. And they do whatever they want, right, to manipulate the currency to enrich themselves at everyone else's expense whenever they feel like it. And um, they have been feeling like it quite a bit uh, in the last few decades. As the, the wealth transfer from the many to the few has dramatically increased. Um, and... Uh, it's important to note, you know, that economic system, right, um, it facilitates, potentially, you know, a monetary system facilitates, uh, you know, people being productive in a society. Well, when that breaks down and you have vast amounts of looting that are occurring, a redistributing of, of wealth from the many to the few, um, then you have, uh, you have issues like famine, starvation, um, you have economic issue, issues like having, you know, more than half the people unemployed and stuff like that. And that's really what's going on right now in the world today, so, um, is you've got massive amounts of corruption that's going on in the um, banking religion, which is it's basically a religion. And it should be called a religion. It should be looked at as a religion. Um, and a lot of these uh, preachers, right, they'll, they'll say, God will give you money, God will give you money. Well, it's not even money. It's like you're asking God for Asherah poles. You're asking God for idols. So, um, he already knows what you need. And so, if, if for some bizarre reason, this continues on where society is um, basically taking its currency, turn it into an idol, and then, you know, he still provides... God still provides, but holy cow, that's, you know, how wicked, how uh, detestable, how disgusting uh, are the things that men do, indeed. Um, anyway, so Jesus is coming back, he is real, we've got a literal fulfillment in this, this, uh, this chapter 3, Church of Philadelphia lines up perfectly with the United States, even the name, but I think I'll look into the rest of these and see if I can't figure out what another one of these churches might be, which nation. Uh, I've been doing a lot of study on the United States in, in the scriptures, in the Bible. It's in Daniel chapter 7, it's four stages in the growth of government. It's in Daniel chapter, or it's in Revelation chapter 12, as the fourth beast, the ten horns and seven heads. Uh, it's in Revelation chapter 13, which combines all four of Daniel uh, seven beasts into one, because it is one nation, it comes up out of the sea. Um, and it's in Revelation chapter 17 and 18, where it actually describes in detail, um, for one hour, the Council of Ten Governors over the Ten Administrative Regions of the United States have authority, and they basically make the decision to defend, is to defend Israel from some invading force. And thus, you know, in that process of defending Israel, they burn parts of Jerusalem with fire. You know, some, some invading forces occupy parts of Jerusalem and the suburbs. And the United States uh, burns those invading forces. It's basically what it's talking about. But the way that it sounds, it sounds like um, the United States hates hates Israel. Well, and I guess if you get dragged halfway across the earth um, to defend someone in another nation, uh, that you might not feel so good about them. 
but yeah, that's basically what's going on there. And um, it's so the, yeah, the United States is in Bible. It's in the Bible. Um, it doesn't call it the United States, of course. That would be way too obvious. And they probably wouldn't have named the United States the United States if it was in here in the Bible uh, by name. Right? I mean, would they? Everybody would know. So, I mean, there's a rational, logical reasoning for all these things. Um, there's a design. Uh, and so, part of it's just making better decisions, folks. So, make better decisions. Um, choose Jesus Christ. And he's coming back. And um, try and, uh, you know, try and do the Father's will. Believe in Jesus. Live righteously. That type of stuff. Good luck, folks. Hope this helps.